Hey there! My name is Brittany and I'll be your guide to crochet this cuddly little lamb. Now this project works up fairly quick, but to keep it as detailed as possible, the tutorial is broken down into three separate videos. First things first, head over to behooked.com slash lamb to find the free pattern and then have a look in the video description for your list of supplies. In video one, we will crochet the head and ears. In video two, we will crochet the limbs and tail. And in video three, we will crochet the body and assemble our lamb. You will find a link to each video in the description as well. So let's get to it, shall we? Now let's start on the head first. We will create a magic ring. So I've just looped it around both of my fingers. You'll insert your hook underneath both of those loops and pull that back strand underneath the first one. Then we'll grab the working yarn there, make a chain that's gonna secure the loop and we will chain one more so everything is in place. Now I can gather up the working yarn and keep the loop in place as I work my single crochets just directly in the center, being sure I'm working under the loop and under the tail. That's the string that we're going to pull in order to close up the ring. I'll make six single crochets. And by the way, I have a super beginner friendly tutorial for the magic ring. I will have that linked here as well as in the description if you want to go ahead and check that out if you're having a little bit of trouble getting this magic ring to work out as it should. And once you have your six single crochet, you can pull on that tail and it will join up the ring. Now for this pattern, we're not going to join at the end of the round. We're gonna continue working in a spiral. So go ahead and stick your hook underneath that first stitch and we will single crochet. So we're starting off here on round number two and that was the first stitch of the round. But because we're not joining, we need to keep track of our first stitch. And I like to use these locking stitch markers to do so. You'll just use whatever you have on hand, a bobby pin, another stitch marker, to mark your first stitch. Now for round two of the head, we will make two single crochets in every stitch. That'll bring our stitch count from six to 12. Okay, now moving on to round number three of the head, I will remove my stitch marker just for a moment and make my first single crochet of round three in that space and then return your stitch marker so you can keep track of the first stitch of this round. Now for round three, we're not going to increase. All we want to do is make one single crochet into every stitch. Now you'll notice here that I'm catching both loops of the stitch. We'll do that throughout the pattern. And for round three, our stitch count will remain the same at 12. Okay, now for round four of the head, go ahead and remove your stitch marker, make your first single crochet of round four in that stitch, and replace your marker. And for this round, we will increase. We'll do so every other stitch. So we're just going to leave that first stitch with one single crochet followed by an increase on the next stitch. Or in other words, we'll put two single crochets in that next stitch. And here's the repeat. We'll single crochet once into the next stitch followed by two single crochets in the next. Now we'll repeat this all the way around. And at the end of round number four, we will have a total of 18 stitches. Now moving on to round number five, we will increase for this round again. So remove your stitch marker, make your first single crochet of this round, and then replace your marker. This time we'll increase every third stitch. So we've made one single crochet there, I'll make my next single crochet 
in the next stitch, followed by the increase, or two single crochets in the next. And here's your repeat, one single crochet into each of the next two stitches, followed by an increase, or two single crochets in the next. You'll repeat this all the way around, and that will change your stitch count from 18 to 24. Now for round six, we will increase again, remove your stitch marker, make your single crochet in the first stitch. That'll be the first one of this round. We'll replace your stitch marker. And this time it will increase on the fourth stitch. So we've made one here, I'll single crochet once into the next two. That gives me a total of three single crochets. And then I will make two single crochets in the next to increase. So here's the repeat for this round. We'll make one single crochet into each of the next three stitches, followed by an increase or two single crochets in the next. We'll repeat this all the way around and we'll have a new stitch count of 30 at the end of round six. Now at the end of round six, we will change to color A. So I've just worked part of my single crochet. I've left it at the point where I yarn over and I pull up a loop, which gives me two on my hook. Lay that down, grab color A. We'll just fold over a little piece and then place that loop on your hook. Pull it through the two loops. So that'll finish the stitch in the previous color. And then we have some house cleaning here to do on the back. So this is the working yarn for color B. I'm just going to trim that. And then find your tail for color A. We're gonna tie the two together. Now this will make sure your join is nice and secure and we don't have to worry about weaving these in because they're going to be on the inside of the head. So I just double knot it and I'm ready to start working in the new color. Now for round seven, we're going to increase again. So remove your stitch marker and make a single crochet in that first stitch. And this is with the new color, of course. That'll be the first stitch of this round. So we'll mark that with your stitch marker. And this time we're going to put four single crochets in between our increases. So I've got one there. I'll work a single crochet into the next three. And then I will increase or make two single crochets in the next. So your repeat for this round is one single crochet into the next four stitches, followed by an increase or two single crochets in the next. You'll repeat that around and that will take your stitch count from 30 to 36. All right, now for rounds eight and nine of the head, we will make one single crochet into every stitch. I'm still going to use my stitch marker because we will increase some more as we shape the head, so keep that in place. But the repeat is simple and it's the same. We'll make one single crochet into every stitch for rounds eight and nine and our stitch count will, will remain 36. All right, now for round number 10, we will increase once again. I will remove my stitch marker, make a single crochet in that stitch. That'll be the first stitch for round 10. And this time we'll make five single crochets in between our increases. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. And then we'll make our increase or two single crochets in that sixth stitch. And that's the repeat for round 10. Make one single crochet into each of the next five stitches followed by an increase. You'll repeat that and when you get to the end of round 10, your stitch count will go from 36 to 42. 
All right, now at the end of round number 10, we're a little less than halfway done with the head. We're moving on to rounds 11 through 17, which have the same repeat. Remove your stitch marker, make a single crochet in that first stitch. So you'll make the first stitch of your round and you'll just make one single crochet into every stitch. Remember, that's the repeat for rounds 11 through 17. So go ahead and finish that up and we'll meet back up at the end of that long repeated section. Remember, your stitch count will be 42 for each of these rounds. Before moving any further, cut about a 24 inch strand of color A so that we can embroider the nose. Being certain that your colored jog is at the underneath side of your lamb head, go ahead and flip it over and we're going to embroider the nose here in the center. I like to start from the inside and work out. So just take your darning needle, poke it through the middle. Be careful that you don't pull it all the way through. You want to have a little tail on the inside so you can tie it all together. Now we're making a simple triangle or an upside down triangle for the nose. So I like to go up to the second row and sort of like one stitch over, poke it through. And then from the inside, work it back out through the center. And go over just a little bit more. Back through the center. And fill in any gaps that you see. When you have the shape you want, go in one more time through the center. And tie that off with the strand that you started out with. These are 10 millimeter shank back eyes. You'll need two, of course. Count six rows up from the top of your nose. And between that one and the next one is where you'll place your two eyes. I like to start from the corner and work up from that on each side of the nose. It works out best if they are about six stitches apart. Then attach the backs to hold them in place. Now picking up on round 18, we're going to decrease a little bit for this round and the next few as well. So I'll remove my stitch marker, make my first single crochet of the round, replace your marker, and then make one single crochet into each of the next four. So we're looking for a total of five here before we make our decrease. And then single crochet two together. And that's our repeat, one single crochet into each of the next five stitches, followed by a single crochet, two together. When you repeat this to the end of your round, that'll bring your stitch count from 42 to 36. For round 19, we will decrease as well. So remove your stitch marker, make a single crochet in that first stitch. And this time we're going to place four single crochets in between our decreases. So we have our first one there. I'll make three more. And we will single crochet two together. I want you to do a, something a little different for this one. We're going to do an invisible decrease because 
over the next few runs, we're going to decrease quite a bit and the back of the head will be visible. So we don't want any holes or gaps. Rather than insert your hook under both loops of the stitch, like we've been doing, just catch that front loop when you're working your single crochet two together. So the stitch itself is worked the same. We're just catching the front loop. And that's your repeat. One single crochet into each of the next four stitches, catching both loops, by the way, followed by the invisible single crochet two together. When you repeat that around, your stitch count will go from 36 to 30. Moving on to round 20, we will decrease again. Make a single crochet in your first stitch. And this time we'll make three single crochets in between our decreases. So I'll just make two more. And then we'll work that invisible single crochet two together. And that's your repeat. One single crochet into each of the next three, followed by an invisible decrease or a single crochet two together with those front loops only. And that will make your stitch count go from 30 to 24. Now round 21 is nice and easy. We'll just make one single crochet into every stitch all the way around. Now moving on to round 22, we're going to decrease once again. This time we'll do so every two stitches. So make one single crochet into each of the next two stitches. Followed by that invisible single crochet two together. When you repeat this around, that'll bring your stitch count from 24 to 18. For round 23, we're going to decrease again, this time every other stitch. So make a single crochet in your first stitch. Followed by an invisible single crochet two together. Then repeat one single crochet in the next stitch, invisible single crochet two together. And when you repeat this around, that'll bring your stitch count from 18 to 12. Before we move any further, you'll need to stuff the head because we're going to close up the opening here. Now for the 24th and final round, we're going to single crochet two together the invisible way all the way around. That'll bring our stitch count from 12 to six. When you've made it all the way around, remove your stitch marker and make a slip stitch into that stitch. Now leave yourself a tail that's about four to five inches. We're actually not going to sew anything in place with this, so it doesn't need to be that long. Pull that tail through the loop on your hook. But what we do need to do is finish closing up this hole. We'll use our darning needle to do that. Then when your tail's nice and secure, just poke your darning needle in, work it back out anywhere, and then we can trim that.
To begin our ear, we'll make a magic ring with six single crochet. Make your first single crochet of round two and place a stitch marker there. And we'll increase this round so that means we need to make two single crochets into every stitch. Now rounds three through six are worked in the same way. You'll just make one single crochet in every stitch. When you get to the end of your sixth round, remove your stitch marker and make a slip stitch in that same stitch. And trim yourself a tail that's a about eight inches long. We're going to use this to sew it onto the head. Pull that tail through the loop. And you'll want to do a little bit of shaping. I like to keep this in the back. I'll flip it over. We are not stuffing the ears. We're just going to flatten them out. And then we want to sort of curl them in so we get this kind of shape. So when you sew it into place, this is how you'll do so. That wraps up our tutorial for today. Thank you so much for joining me. It's been a real pleasure to walk you through this project. I hope you'll share your photos with me on social. You can find me on Instagram at BeHooked, or you can post a photo directly to my Facebook page at BeHooked Crochet. Now, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the show. My sole purpose here is to help you get better at your craft, and I do that through episodes of BeHooked TV that publish every single week and make along tutorials just like this one. Now go ahead and hit the like button if you found this video helpful in any way, shape, or form. Thank you so much for doing that, and I'll see you in the next one.